In our book, Tomorrow's Table, my husband, who's an organic farmer, um, spends some time talking about uh, the, the biological basis of genetic engineering and how it's not in, in conflict with many of the principles of organic agriculture. And, and really what we try to do in the book is to talk about the large issues of sustainability. How do we reach those goals of sustainability? And it's less important how the seed was developed. And, and what's more important is if the seed and the farming practices fit into a larger goal of sustainably based farm, farming. Genetically engineered papaya was developed by a local Hawaiian, Dennis Gonzalez, and he developed a papaya that was res resistant to a very devastating virus. And I think we're not seeing enough of those uh, publicly funded innovations coming to the marketplace, partly because we do not have um, enough public funding for agricultural biotechnology. But certainly genetic engineering is a tool that's used um, in uh, public laboratories all over the world as it is in private laboratories that are working on plant genetics. There's a couple ways that agricultural biotechnology will support organic farming. So one, take the example of papaya in Hawaii. Because 90% uh, of the papaya is genetically engineered to resist the virus, there's less of this uh, serious viral disease around, and um, this virus can knock yields back 20-fold. And so organic farmers are now seeing that there's less of, of problems in their own fields. So that's sort of um, an indirect benefit. So they're benefiting from the, or, uh, the genetically engineered papaya. And in fact, uh, many organic growers uh, surround their fields with genetically engineered papaya and then take the organically grown papaya and sell it at very high prices. So I think that's um, an advantage.